I'm Bob Ray, and I'm the president of the Franklin County Historic Preservation Society. And I am standing in front of the uh, original set of gallows that hanged at Charlie Burke. And uh, these gallows were actually uh, built as a kit in 1915 by Jackson County for the uh, hanging of Joe DeBerry. And Joe DeBerry was an employee of a, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lizzie Martin. And Mrs. Martin was the wife of a prominent attorney. He, as a caretaker, uh, killed her with a poker, a uh, fireplace poker, and had a uh, hanging that uh, is now part of a book called uh, Legends of uh, Southern Illinois, Hauntings of Southern Illinois. So the gallows were uh, loaned to uh, Williamson County one or two times, and then in 1928, a burger who was incarcerated in this jail for one year prior to his hanging uh, uh, was uh, uh, hanged, uh, but when uh, he was convicted of murder, they thought that they were going to use the electric chair, but the uh, judge ordered that they use the means of execution at the time of his crime, at the time of the murder of Mayor Joe Adams, which was uh, hanging. So they needed a set of gallows, did not have one. So Franklin County borrowed this set from Jackson County. So following the famous burger hanging on the, the grounds here in 1928, when he died smiling, uh, the gallows were taken back to Jackson County, and they were stored in the basement. Well, in 1973, they had some, uh, I, I've been told, some uh, water issues in the basement and they needed space, so they were going to discard the gallows. And the Jackson County Historical Society urged them to preserve the gallows. And in 1973, the Jackson County Historical Society and the uh, a, a French reenactment group uh, put the gallows up in downtown Grand Tower, Illinois for a Fourth of July celebration. So from that point on, we had uh, people who attracted the gallows, such as the Franklin County Historic Preservation Society, did not know where they were, what happened to them. Well, uh, as it turns out, they uh, went to a Mr. Elliott, who was a, a prominent farmer in the area, farmed several thousand acres just in, in rural Grand Tower, Russell Elliott, uh, took the gallows and agreed to store them. And he stored them so well that they remained up in the loft, hidden off to the side, away from the site, uh, for 40 years. Uh, Mr. Elliott died in uh, 2008, and his family, when going through the estate just recently, uh, were checking the barn, uh, and the barn had been vandalized as well as a farmhouse adjacent to the barn. It's amazing someone did not find the gallows. They knew they had something because it's a uh, kit definitely assembled, uh, and they found that, in fact, Mr. Elliott had uh, taken the gallows from that uh, uh, Fourth of July celebration and stored them. So, uh, two and a half weeks ago, we uh, got a phone call from uh, Mr. Marion Mitchell, who is a retired history teacher living in Carbondale, who said, my biggest problem will be convincing you that I'm legitimate, but I know uh, I've received a call from the Elliott family, uh, and we, we know that we have uh, found the Burger Gallows, and uh, they first contacted the uh, SIU Museum Department, and they recommended that the gallows would be most fitting in our with our 20s theme here at Benton. And uh, they also contacted Gary Daniel, who wrote A Night of Another Sort, uh, a definitive story about Burger, and he recommended that they be placed in our museum. So, but I had to get them the next day, made a couple of phone calls, contacted my friend Arnold Moore, who said, what time do you want to leave? And we uh, drove to Grand Tower and met this Mrs. Uh, uh, Mary Mitchell and Carbondale, drove to Grand Tower, and, uh, this Mrs. Uh, or Mr. Elliott's daughter met us at the driveway of this farm and went up and, and uh, could not see Gallows, thought we were on a wild goose chase, and got a ladder and looked up over a, a loft area, and, uh, and here they are. So uh, then after getting them back, where do you store a set of Gallows? They're 18 feet tall, you can't assemble them, you would not want to put them outside. So we're in another cell block in the jail museum. So it just so happened that you could only take the, each section, the longest piece being 18 feet, in through a kitchen uh, door, then around the parlor and up a set of steps. And the only place they could wind around to get into the cell area is through a, uh, a food entry door that's about six inches tall and about a foot wide. The food trays would be handed to prisoners. So all the pieces are displayed. Now this piece is the cross member to which the uh, uh, rope was, was uh, attached, and then the longer pieces down on the floor are the 18-foot uprights. We have a uh, lever that actually uh, uh, tripped the trap door, and the 
uh, of the trapdoor, we do not have the platform, but we have the, uh, the hinge, the, the bigger support pieces for that. And then there are large metal uh, rods with, that are threaded on the end that uh, allow this to be assembled. It's kind of like a big set of Lincoln logs. You don't need a single nail to assemble it. Now, when they brought it to Benton in 1928, as well as when they loaned it to Marion, our sources tell us that they did, every uh, county had, was responsible for building their own uh, steps. So four workmen assembled the gallows. We have a photo of that out on the grounds and uh, uh, built the uh, 13 steps. And here's a photo of the uh, carpenters, the four men assembling the gallows prior to the hanging in 1928. Charlie Berger's cell was over just out of, out of view of this photo, and he talked to the workers. And he, one comment was, build it strong, boys, those are mine. And then uh, some school kids uh, came by one afternoon and climbed the steps, and Charlie leaned out the window and said, get off of that, that is mine. So there are a lot of stories about the gallows and some of the humor that Charlie used from, from watching them outside of his uh, jail cell window. So we're... Uh, place with the efforts of the Jackson County Historic Preservation Society for having the foresight that these would be a valuable item. And they're here in the dry, uh, have uh, uh, all kinds of protection alarm systems, and uh, we don't really plan on putting them up because of the space considerations, but we're already talking about the 100th anniversary of the hanging, which is going to be in 15 years, in uh, 2028, and uh, we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to get them out and have some kind of a special event uh, during that occasion.